This video will describe Chrome Natural. Chrome Natural is the delivery of an FP1 device on a Chrome Guided Smile platform. This case is a little bit unique because the doctor freehanded the implants. Uh, we did provide an osteotomy guide, but um, when the doctor was in the middle of surgery, he decided to freehand, and it happens from time to time, but, uh, but really the case is intended to be guided. But we, would sh we wanted to share this case uh, anyway, even though it's not a normal protocol. Chrome Guided Smile, uh, even when natural or other variations of Guided Smile, uh, all follow the same protocol with records. Because this patient is dentate, we want to see a full face, full smile picture, profile picture, and then retracted uh, in occlusion so that we can see how the teeth come together so that we can verify it on the model. So full face profile, left, right, center, retracted. Even this picture here should be retracted. Uh, and those are the photographic documents. And then this doctor has digital impressions. So he just captured upper lower bite. Uh, be sure to capture the full palette on the maxilla if there's going to be a backup denture ordered. Very important and then capture a CT scan and you always want to capture a CT with the teeth apart in a dentate case. That's also critical. So as with all maxillary chrome guided smile cases, when appropriate, sometimes it's not, uh, but just about all chrome guided smile cases uh, come with a smile simulation uh, with the full package. We like to make sure that we are delivering exactly what the doctor and patient desire. So this will be turned around pretty quickly, uh, 24 hours, and emailed back to the doctor. And uh, you can share with the patient um, or not. Um, generally, it's, uh, generally, it's shared with the patient so that everybody's on the same page. And the company that does this is Preview, P-R-E-V-U. It's a wonderful smile simulation company. Would re definitely recommend using them. So what we do is we take all the records, uh, we bring them into a software, we analyze the records, communicate with the doctor on tooth shape, tooth size, vertical, space, implant position, implant planning. We go through many, many steps to make sure these cases are uh, executed properly uh, and then what we do is we deliver uh, the package uh, for the day of surgery we call it the day of surgery guided smile package and one of the items uh, in the kit in the box is the surgery mat and this will help the doctor with the guided kit in this case it's neodent uh, this will give the instruments to use on each site uh, the implant size and uh, all the necessary tools for, uh, for parts and pieces. And then we give these cross-section views of how the floating guide will appear around the bone. Uh, this will uh, instruct on the abutment uh, rotation and the trajectory of the prosthetic screw. This is an image of the osteotomy guide, and then this is the scalloped guide image here. So that is the surgery mat. This is large. It's uh, this one, I believe, was about 30 inches long by 12 inches high, and it is taped to the cabinet so that it can be easily viewed during surgery. This is the surgery mat that goes on the counter. This is where the doctor will place all of the implants. So there's a lot of implants in this arch. This is just a maxillary um, implant for each multi-unit abutment and two sets of temporary cylinders one for the prosthetic and one for the rapid appliance so let's go through the components of chrome on a case like this this is the prosthetic it has metal reinforcement we do make two prosthetics one the patient's going to wear home and then one that is the one that must be picked up at surgery uh, the rapid appliance which is used to send the records for the final. So this is metal reinforced. It's a printed resin. Uh, it's very strong. We've had very, very good success with this uh, you know, long term during the months while the patient's wearing. Uh, osteotomy guide. This is uh, certainly unique in the industry. You know, every other guide is plastic. And you can see the visualization, the visibility of the bone, 
the architecture. You can watch the implants and the drills go in, watch osteotomy creation, and of course you can watch irrigation happen to ensure that it's happening. Really a nice feature of metal. Uh, you can see these little nubs here. These indicate rotation. So this is how you'll use your implant mount to rotate the implant in the right index. This is floating guide technology. Uh, the guide never touches bone, unlike plastic guides, unlike big footprint guides that hug the lingual, hug the buckle. You have to reduce the bone to get this seated. Those are very challenging for FP1 situations especially. But this is all pin supported, pin trajectory, floating guide technology, lingual view. So you can see how easy this would be to seat. You don't have to reduce bone first. And these pins go transcortical. And they're also in a step-down drill pin combination. The, the, pin, uh, the drill has a step-down on the end so that when you place these pins, you are tapping into the cortical plate. It's very secure. This is the scallop guide. It's a thick uh, printed metal. Uh, all chrome parts are printed with SLM technology. Uh, so this will guide the doctor in creating the scallops. You'll see when the case arrives that the bone will be marked in red where we've adjusted it on the model. So you will passively seat this and adjust bone or remove um, you know, lay tissue until, the, until it seats. There is almost no lingual coverage of anything on chrome. The only thing that may impinge a little bit on the lingual tissue is the osteotomy guide, but we try to maintain... Uh, the lingual uh, blood supply and uh, for quicker healing try not to have any reflection on the lingual below any bone reduction levels so just some images of the um, scallop guide so let's go through the components and then we'll quickly go through the surgery this is the pin guide the pin guide is always tried in to make sure that it fits that there's no rock and then it is assembled with the fixation base and it is reinserted and then uh, the sites are drilled for the pins and then they are tapped in with a surgical mallet. So this is just some images of the fixation base and how it looks in the mouth and you can see on the surgery mat uh, that this is exactly how it will look in the mouth. The fixation base stays in during the entire surgery. It was delivered by the pin guide, but then it supports the osteotomy guide and the carrier guide uh, and also the uh, long-term temporary prosthetic and the rapid appliance. So it serves many purposes and it stays in the mouth. And of course the scallop guide and then uh, the prosthetic seated. You can see here this is on an adjusted bone model and this is on a pre-adjusted bone model. Uh, you know, a pre-adjusted patient. So you, the scallop guide would have been used to make sure that this seats passively. You can see, you, you'll, you'll notice places where it hangs up and the scallop guide will help uh, reduce that bone to make it seat passively. Okay, day of surgery. Uh, here's the surgery mat. Here's all the parts lined up, very well organized so that you can quickly pull the part you need when you get to that implant. And then uh, part soaking here and uh, well organized. This doctor um, restores a lot of chrome cases, sometimes two or three arches in a day. Uh, so it has to be organized, it has to be well planned out. So let's go through the steps. Um, this is uh, the pin guide being tried in first. Sometimes it's really uncomfortable for the patient. Uh, so you'll anesthetize the patient, then try the pin guide in, make sure there's no rock and there won't be. Then the tissue is flapped. Lay the tissue back on the labial up to the point just beyond the fixation base. All right, so it can be an aggressive uh, flap on the labial <clears throat> as with all you know, full arch guides. Laying the flap and then the pin guide goes in with the fixation base together. And this is held firm, held firmly against the teeth. Uh, an assistant can hold this while the doctor drills, but this must not move during the pinning process. The pins have to be in the right place because the fixation base must be in the perfect position 
or the subsequent guides that are stacked on top could be in a different, will be in a different position. So this is planned in the ideal spot and the pin guide will deliver it there. Just hold it firm. Uh, be sure that there is no tissue in the way you can tuck it underneath. Uh, sometimes a little bit more flapping after the fixation base is in, uh, especially on the lingual if you need to reflect on the lingual for bone reduction. Then the scallop guide is delivered and in this case the bone is holding it up a little bit. So the doctor adjusted the bone until it's seated and then vertically uh, from the occlusal made the uh, ideal size osteotomies uh, following the marked up uh, socketed bone model. So little adjustments to the bone here and there until the prosthetic seats passively. All right, so this may have to go in and out of the mouth a few times. Then the prosthetic will be seated to make sure it's passive. It may need to adjust a little bit of bone there. The goal is to have symmetrical architecture when adjusting, and that's how it's planned. So that is how the scallop guide will guide the adjustment of the bone. So in this case, once this uh, prosthetic was seated, the doctor simply drilled the implant sites through the prosthetic. These were all straight implants. Now that's a very rare thing. Most of the time, I mean every other time, the doctor will use our osteotomy guide to, uh, to drive the implants, but he knew exactly where he wanted them to emerge uh, because there were obviously holes in the prosthetic. He knew the bone architecture and he could visualize it. So his comfort level was seat the implants and then deliver the prosthetic. So it's not a recommended um, a process, but for this doctor, it worked out really well. It's even a final image there on the right. So just a, lo a lovely delivery. Just go through some more images here. You know, so here was the process, seating, looting and picking up, suturing, and then delivery. So that is an FP1 prosthetic and just allows the patient to uh, have bone for years to come as opposed to uh, just, you know, leveling the bone down for an FB3 or FB2 design. So thank you very much to the doctor for sharing these images. Um, just some parting comments, you know, always be aware and attentive during the surgery. Watch out for stuff hitting the floor. And always have fun. Thank you, Dr. Charles, for being a great partner and for sharing your surgeries with us.